Please join me in a word of prayer. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, as we gather here this day, we gather under your grace and under your mercy, and we are thankful, Lord, that you grant us the gifts through these means of grace that we receive this day, your Holy Gospel, through the, the bread and wine with your body and blood in the Lord's Supper. We pray, Lord, that as we receive these, these means of grace, that you would strengthen us in our faith in you and our walk with you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, time to mop again. Ultra Guild people, just so you know, there is not water in this bucket. <laughs> and breathe again. You know, one of the jobs I had when I was in at the end of my high school career and then first part of college career was a job at the SNH Green Stamp Redemption Store. You got to be old to know what that is. But every Saturday at Destination Green Stamp Store, the last thing we did, we closed the store, we had to mop the store. We being me. Big store, a lot of space. Every week, get the mop out, mop the store. I got to tell you, that was my favorite day of the week. No. Not at all. I did not like mopping that big old store. It was cumbersome. It was hard to do. But did it every week. You know, we have times and things that we need to clean up, don't we? I, I remember one time Sally and I had to clean up an apartment that her mother rented out. And her mom was very hands-off. The person lived there, I don't remember, four or five years. I don't know. But we walked in after this guy moved out. And I think he never cleaned the whole time he was there. I drew the assignment of the bathroom. Sally got the kitchen. I walked in the bathroom. There was at least an eighth inch, if not more, soap scum in the tub. We're not talking about the toilet today, okay? It was bad. And I remember how filthy that was and, you know, cleaning with sponge and mop and trying to clean all this stuff up. It was quite the chore. And I was thinking, why would somebody let this get to this point? How do you even live like that? Well, today in our gospel reading, we have something that was happening at the temple of the Lord. We read a thing about the money changers and how they were desecrating the Father's house. As, as Jesus said, the Father's house. They were desecrating the temple. And you think, how could that go on? But it just went on and it went on and it went on. And finally Jesus came in at that time with His cords. And he began turning over the, 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 the... Emptying out the coins and driving out the money changers and turning over their tables because what they were doing was wrong and it needed to be cleaned up. I began to wonder, what would Jesus turn over or say we needed to clean up if he came into our church? I began to wonder, what would Jesus say that needed to be cleaned up that need to be driven out if he came into my house. And I began to wonder, what would Jesus say need to be cleaned up if he came to my life? You know, we talk about the disciples saying, you know, the zeal for his father's house consumed him. And I, and I think about that and I think, man, we have received grace upon grace from our God. Christ came to this earth, just as we confess, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered and died for our sins. We've received what he did for us in the waters of baptism. We became his people and we've inherited all of this stuff. But yet I know, just like you do, that we struggle with sin. 
And I wonder, what would Jesus come in and begin overturning in our lives, driving out with his whip of cords? You know, the problems exist because sin exists. The Apostle Paul, in writing to the church, to the churches of the newly, newly growing Christian church, wrote many times about things that needed to be cleaned up. You know, we read in Ephesians 4, just as an example, he writes, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with all malice. And I think, wow, that stuff still happens in the church today. And the, and the great gift that God has given us of forgiveness and love and mercy to one another sometimes sits in the background. It's often withheld. And so what happens? That bitterness continues to fester and it continues to grow. And that's why the Apostle also writes, not those things, but rather... Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. And so I wonder if Jesus came into our church or the church down the road or any church in this world, I wonder if He would come in and say, why have you traded the mercy that my Father gave you for what I see now in your midst? Maybe we say, come Lord Jesus, clean our house and forgive us. It goes into our homes, doesn't it too? If He came into our home, into our house where we live, would these kinds of things happen in your home? I had a wedding yesterday and one of the verses we often read is from Ephesians 5 where it talks about the relationship of husband and wife and you know, that, that section starts off, submit to one another, uh, you know, reverence for Christ, and it goes on, wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord. Husbands, love your wife like Christ loved the church, which is unconditional. And we go through those things, and, you know, just talking about marriage or even family and, and, and child and parent relationships, how often do we get those things skewed and mixed up where, where suddenly we're just at each other instead of that forgiveness and love that He gave us permeating our homes. It's there too, isn't it? You know, Joshua, before he entered the promised land, after the Ten Commandments we had heard about were given to the people of Israel, they wandered the 40 years in the desert and they're about to enter the promised land. Joshua's going to lead them in. and So the Lord is talking to him about it. What are you going to do? How are you going to be? How are you going to be as a leader? And Joshua said, it's for me and my house. We will serve the Lord. What zeal do we have for our house at home that the Lord would come in and remove so that we would say, come Lord Jesus, clean our house and forgive us. And man, it really gets personal here, doesn't it? It really gets personal here. You know, we, we learn from Scripture that our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Clean, cleansed, redeemed, sanctified, by the Lord God Almighty. But yet we hear Jesus saying things like, but what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart and defiles a person. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person. What's in our hearts? What does Jesus need to come in and clean out? You know, we... We worry a lot about, you know, what are your cholesterol levels, what's your blood pressure, how are you taking care of all those things in your body when the things that affect our souls are so much more critical for our eternal being. So when we do a checkup, what do we find? What does Jesus need to come in and overturn and clean out of our house. Oh yeah, come Lord Jesus, clean our house and forgive us. Where do we turn to be clean? Well, yeah, of course, it's Jesus, isn't it? 
We go to him, we go to his word, and we confess our sins before him, and he promises to cleanse us. We read his word and we see these are the things that are pleasing in this temple of God, in our homes, in our churches. We find those things and those map out the path for us. We dare not be like a school teacher about whom I read. I'm going to share this story with you. A school teacher lost her life savings in a business scam from some swindler that made it sound so good. And when her investment disappeared and her dreams of her, her retirement dreams shattered, she began to go to the Better Business Bureau to investigate this business now about which she had read. And when she went there, the person for the Better Business Bureau says, Why on earth didn't you come to us first? Hadn't you heard about the Better, Better Business Bureau? Oh, yes, said the lady. I've always known about you. But I didn't come because I was afraid you'd tell me not to do it. Right? But see, that's our human flesh, isn't it? That's that sinful part of us that wars against us, that sinful part that Satan prods and prods and prods and says, this, just go down this path. Just keep doing this. But Jesus comes. And He comes to clean our house. Martin Luther, writing in a small catechism about confession, talks about confession saying, it has two parts. First, we confess our sins. And second, that we receive absolution, that is forgiveness from the pastors, from God himself, not doubting, but firmly believing that by it our sins are forgiven before God in heaven. And he writes, what sins should we confess? And he says, before God, we should plead guilty of all sins, even those we are not aware of as we do in the Lord's Prayer. Before a pastor, we confess those sins we know and feel in our hearts. And then he goes on, which are these? He says, consider your place in life according to the Ten Commandments, right? That we just read those from Exodus. He writes, are you a father, mother, son, daughter, husband, wife, or worker? Have you been disobedient, unfaithful, or lazy? Have you been hot-tempered, rude, or quarrelsome? Have you hurt someone by your words or deeds? Have you stolen, been negligent, wasted anything, or done any harm? Yes, 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 yes. The good news is that Jesus came not just to cleanse that temple of his father's house. He came to cleanse our temples. He did it by destroying his temple. We heard it destroy this temple. I'll raise it again in three days. He was speaking of the temple of his body. He came to give his life on that cross for our sins so that our sins might be forgiven and remembered no more. We find ourselves caught in this trap of sin, we understand and know that by His death and resurrection, He's paid the price. He has come and He has washed us clean. In waters of baptism, we are cleansed from our sin. In repentance, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. The cleansing is there. Thank God that He has the zeal for our house. The house our Father has made by the power of His Spirit in word and sacrament. Thank God that we get cleansed. I must say, though, that cleansing comes with also an extra word. Jesus said, When the unclean spirit has gone out of a person, it passes through waterless places seeking rest but finds none. Then it says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when it comes, it finds the house empty, swept, and put in order. Then it goes and brings with it seven other spirits more evil than itself. And they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that person is worse than the first. So also will it be with this evil generation. It comes with that warning, doesn't it? You know... Every Saturday, the mop bucket was out and the mop was on the floor because, you know, if you didn't do that, the filth would just build up 
And it would just build up. And it would just build up. But when we come and desire those clean hearts before God, our, our sins are forgiven. We're, we're cleansed. And you come to this altar rail today to receive again the very body and blood of Jesus with and under that bread and wine. You're coming here for the forgiveness of your sins, cleansed of all your sins. So we thank God that He comes, right? To clean our house. To clean the Father's house. Shall we pray? Come, Lord Jesus. Clean our house and forgive us, O Lord. Come, Lord Jesus, every day. Keep them as mindful of our baptisms and the washing of water and word. Lord, every day may this old Adam in us die and arise, the new man, that the new man may arise, giving grace, glory, and honor to you, O Lord, because you have cleansed us. Lord, may your zeal, that zeal you place upon us for your house, be that which leads and guides us in this life. O oh Lord, that as your redeemed and forgiven people, we may live out these penitent lives, lives seeking and desiring the amendment that you give us by your Holy Spirit. We pray, Lord Jesus, come, clean our house, and forgive us. Amen. We're going to continue with the gathering of our offerings.